Hey guys, this is Paul with VHSCollector.com and I'm finally doing another VHS review. I know I said I was going to do that double feature, which I still want to do, but it's been a while since I uh, saw those two movies, so I kind of have to refresh myself on those. But for now, I decided to watch a new movie, something I haven't seen yet, and uh, it is Mongrel. This is the big box of Mongrel right here, and this thing is awesome. I always remember seeing the slipcase of this, and, I, and the slipcase has some really cheesy artwork. That doesn't really do the movie justice because it's actually a pretty decent, entertaining movie. I was actually surprised that I enjoyed this movie. Um, but this artwork is much cooler than the um, much cooler than the slipcase. The slipcase looks like a you know very cartoonish, but this thing's really vicious. Look at that three-headed dog. That's freaking awesome. They're freaking vicious and terrifying. It doesn't really set the mood, in my opinion, of the overall film, but it's just it's cool nonetheless. I remember seeing this artwork online a while ago when I first started to collect these and I always thought the artwork was super awesome but I just never knew what distributor that artwork was from. I just remember seeing the cover. Eventually I did find out and it just happens to be a really difficult uh, big box to get from Paragon. A lot of people even forget about this movie when they think of Paragon big boxes. It's rated R by KOV. What does that mean? KOV is King of Video. They pretty much run the Paragon label. If you notice on the back of some of the slip cases, it actually says King of Video, so I guess that's the parent company. Now, the movie begins with a tour of the house with some creepy music. Um, it actually really sets an awesome mood, but for the first hour of the movie, it doesn't really feel like a horror film. It just feels like a bunch of people living in this boarding house that have a few conflicts with each other. It has a pretty cool opening credit sequence, something that you wouldn't expect with a low-budget film like this. Um, this film is actually put together fairly well. I just get the impression that the person making this movie actually cared about what they were doing. But in this film, um, you could kind of tell between the editing and the shots and you know some of the panning and different motions with the camera. You could tell that the filmmaker or cinematographer actually put some effort into making this movie. And that's what makes it different than a lot of the other crappy movies I've reviewed. Now the story begins with this guy named Ken who is, I guess, living in this house. The house is actually rented to like four or five people who each have a room. Someone left and, uh, you know, he's taking over the room. While he's approaching the house, he sees this vicious dog chained up. The dog is just barking. In fact, the dog doesn't look very vicious. It looks like a mud. It doesn't look like a Rottweiler or, or a pit bull. The dog isn't very scary. He's just a, a very annoying barking dog. Um, but he's let into the house by this guy named Jerry, which seems to be like a geeky, shy kind of guy. We find out that he's terrified of dogs because of he was mauled by a dog when he was younger. And he actually tells Ken that one day that dog is going to get loose and hurt somebody. Which, of course, is foreshadowing. But uh, Jerry gives the guy a, a tour of the room and tour of the house. And they become friends. Now, one by one, Ken starts to meet the other people that live in the house. It's like three guys, maybe three or four guys, and two women. I must say that the characters are actually pretty interesting in this movie. Now, the acting's not that good, but sometimes the character itself is uh, more important than the acting. It's what makes the movie interesting. The movie doesn't have a bunch of flat characters, which could sometimes just kill the movie because you have to be invested in the characters to actually care about them. But you start to kind of get to know these characters just based on how they interact with each other. Now as the movie continues there's a scene where one of the guys in the house begins to tease a dog with a, a raw piece of steak just for the fun of it. A lot of these guys like to just play jokes on each other and annoy each other. He goes out and starts swinging a piece of steak in front of the dog and the dog's chained up. The dog can't go anywhere. He's just barking trying to grab at the steak. The guy who owns the dog, Ike, another guy who lives in the house, of course, he's telling him to stop doing it. The dog's going to get loose, which of course happens. The dog gets loose and he begins to maul the guy who was waving the steak in front of him. And actually, you don't really feel bad for the guy because he was teasing this poor friggin' dog. And uh, once they're separated, and he gets pretty messed up by the dog, once they're separated, Woody, the guy who is kind of like a total douchebag in the movie, he comes out of the house with a gun and shoots the dog, um, even though the two are already separated. But before that, he kind of hints that he's been wanting to kill that dog forever, or he's mentioned it. But now he finally did, he was just waiting for that moment, even though he didn't have to. The owner of the dog, Ike, pretty much yells at him, telling him he didn't have to kill the dog, and he really didn't have to. Now that Woody killed Ike's dog, he decides to get himself a puppy, which I thought was kind of weird, but it almost feels like he did that out of spite. After that, the guy Ken, the new guy, he starts to talk with this girl named Sharon. Ike always had a thing for Sharon, but Ken was just chatting. He wasn't really flirting with her. And when Ike sees this, he gets totally pissed off, and he wants to get revenge on Ken, even though they were just talking. And uh, Woody has a reputation of being a prankster, and 
getting back at people. So two get together to pull this elaborate prank on uh, Ken. And pretty much what happens is that they tell Ken that Sharon's up in his room naked or something like that. And Ken goes running up there all excited. The lights are out. He, you know, strips it down and goes into the bed. And when he's in the bed, he goes to take the covers off who he thinks is Sharon. And of course, there's the dead dog. I thought that was kind of disturbing because... The guy who wanted to get revenge on Ken, that's his dog. He used his own dead dog that I guess he's supposed to love, puts it in this guy's bed as a prank. I mean, if I loved a pet or something, I would bury it and then I wouldn't use it as part of an elaborate joke. That was kind of disturbing. Ken gets up, knocks over some water, tries to turn on a lamp and gets electrocuted and gets fried and pretty much dies. Everyone is freaking out because they feel like it was their fault, even though it was still kind of an accident, but it wouldn't have happened if they didn't set up that elaborate prank. So now Ken is dead. Now weird things start to happen in the house. The guy Jerry, who was scared to death of dogs, he starts to hear this really weird, scary growling. Um, and it's really creepy growling because it sounds like a person growling. It doesn't sound like an actual dog. And uh, at one point, Woody goes down to the basement to see his puppy, and it, the puppy's totally mutilated it's ripped to shreds and he thinks I did it because they had disagreement over whether they should tell the truth about what happened with Ken Jerry comes running and says no it was a vicious dog I heard it growling he ripped apart the puppy no one really believed him that day when Ike is coming home from his job and he's actually a mailman one of the guys at the house tips Ike off telling him that Woody is pissed off at him because he thinks he killed his puppy and then Ike's like all right I'll let him cool off and I'll go hang out at a bar later that night Ike comes home from the bar all drunk comes stumbling in the house and here we got this really weird scene we don't really get to see the creature but he gets attacked outside the house we hear a lot of growling and screaming from Ike the next day one of the women find Ike's body in some bushes while she's watering the weeds it looks like but they find his body and they actually call the police even though there was this two murders at this place it's just one cop there investigating this crime then Woody disappears and then Jerry's talking about these uh, dreams of this vicious dog that's coming in his dreams I think one or two other people who are still left in the house get also attacked and then, uh, at some point Sharon comes back into the house because she had already moved out because she was having a problem there but she goes there to, to see Jerry she actually liked Jerry because he was actually nice and, and despite that everyone picked on him so she I guess kind of felt bad for him and then he tries to make a move on her then he starts to act very weird, starts to say all these weird things like, you never wanted me, you don't like me, you lied to me, and then he starts growling, and at that point we realize he's the creature that's been attacking everybody. Not that he transformed, he was a human being. It's not like a supernatural film. He just starts growling like a maniacal dog and started attacking people and killing them with his bare hands, which is kind of hard to believe because some of these, a lot of these guys were a lot bigger than him, and it's just hard to imagine him killing these guys with his bare hands. I mean, how did he rip them apart with, with his fingernails and, and his teeth? It just seems a little ridiculous to me. Um, but it's totally just watching this little, little small dweeby guy go psycho, growling like a dog with blood all over his mouth. It was quite entertaining. And at many times, uh, the chase throughout the house got very suspenseful. And I was really impressed with that. I mean, um, you just... I'm not going to say I didn't expect it to... For it to be a human or to be Jerry, but I didn't expect it to end up being so creepy as it as it was. Just to see this, you know, a total shift in this character. I thought it was done very well, actually. So that's Mongrel. I actually enjoyed this film, and I don't say that very often. It was put together very well. Um, all the actors, even some of the more major characters, never acted in another movie ever before. Um, most of them and then there was like one or two who went on to have flourishing careers but most of them even ones that had bigger parts just never ended up doing anything this movie actually has Aldo Ray and he's in a bunch of other movies he's in this movie as the uh, landlord he's like a crazy landlord who hated these kids especially since all these murders started to happen Sharon is about to get attacked by Jerry as a raving dog it's actually Aldo Ray his character as the landlord that kills Jerry shoots him right in the back with a shotgun that's how the movie ends I'm not really sure why this film is so obscure I would consider this a hidden gem it's actually pretty entertaining somebody on Amazon is selling bootleg DVD-Rs I never really suggest people to buy those, the DVD-Rs, because they are just bootlegs. Um, so the quality is not going to be great. But I guess if you want to see the movie, there's not many options you have except to 
find an original VHS, which might be costly, or to uh, buy a bootleg. But I'd rather buy a cup box than a bootleg any day. Um, I don't want to buy a DVD-R. I know that someone just ripped a VHS and was burning those DVD-Rs for less than a dollar each. You know, I, I just feel so much better at owning, a, you know, the actual thing. So I suggest getting this. And look at this art. Um, what they did with the DVD one, it's the slipcase art, which isn't as cool and looks kind of cartoony. And it doesn't do this movie justice because it's actually a good movie. And that cartoony artwork on the slipcase just makes it seem kind of goofy. And like, you know, sometimes if the artwork is terrible, you might get the impression that the movie is terrible. But this movie is actually uh, pretty good. Um, if you like killer dog movies, there's not a lot of dog action in the movie. But the concept of a dog is in the movie a lot because Jerry is terrified by dogs and eventually at some point he, in his mind, becomes a raging, crazy dog tearing at people and killing them with his bare hands and teeth. Um, but it, like I said, it's very well put together and I really enjoyed it and I recommend any of you guys to watch it. If you can get your hands on it, it's not that rare, but um, yeah, that's Mongrel. I give it a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, that's about it with this one. Um, I hope to do more reviews, and I hope to do that double feature really soon. I'm really looking forward to doing that, but of course I have to watch those two movies again. But I uh, hope to do that soon, so thanks for watching. Good night, guys. Oh, my God.